Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show where in this video we're going to talk about chocolate and whether it's a good idea to have it for breakfast as opposed to a different time of the day. So apparently many people my age don't eat breakfast but for me breakfast is my main meal of the day and I love chocolate and I've had many chocolate breakfasts in my life and well partly because if I have it at night time I just can't sleep. So being the chocolate and breakfast fanatic that I am, I was thrilled when I came across this paper the other day which literally says chocolate for breakfast prevents circadian desynchrony in experimental models of jet lag and shift work. So in this video let's break this paper down and explore whether there's any truth and any benefits to having chocolate at breakfast. So the benefits described in this paper refer to improving circadian desynchrony. So firstly, we kind of need to go through circadian rhythms, just a general overview so that you're on the same page that I'm on. So the circadian rhythm are rhythms that occur roughly about today and they're just changes in the body regarding behaviour, physiology, metabolism and cell activity. And the reason that certain processes happen at certain times of the day is necessary to prepare organisms for the daily challenges and requires a well-coordinated synchrony between the day and night cycles. I have other videos on more detail regarding the circadian rhythms which are evidently very popular so you should check those out if you want to but in particular check out how circadian clock defects cause disease because that's most relevant to this video because what we know is that we live by three clocks and so these three different clocks are the sun and the changes between the light and dark cycles, the circadian clock that I just mentioned and also our social clock and so it's often referred to as social jet lag but also you've got physical jet lag and then you've got shift work and the thing is there's a lot of evidence accumulating now that particularly shift workers because of the desynchrony that they have with their social clock uh, in comparison to the circadian clock, they have a higher risk of developing cancer. So what this paper sought out to do was to see whether chocolate and having chocolate at breakfast can help prevent these consequences from occurring. But why chocolate and why food? This all sounds a little bit random. Well, just hold out for a second. Basically, food intake is a potent synchronizer for the circadian rhythms. So like light and dark cycles, food intake can also play a role in coordinating circadian rhythms for some organs, not all tissue types. And there's been many studies that have shown the importance of regulating food intake to reduce the detrimental metabolic effects of circadian disruption. Okay, but still, why chocolate? Why not apples? Well, maybe the authors are also chocolate fans like I am because they have previously reported that scheduled access to chocolate entrains brain areas involved in motivation and in the metabolic response to food. And also another study showed that scheduled chocolate also entrains the circadian system, enhancing the amplitude of neuronal activation in the SCN, which is the part of the brain that coordinates the circadian rhythm. So based on this, they hypothesised that the timed eating of a piece of chocolate could prevent circadian disruption. So to test this hypothesis, the team decided to test this on rats and to give them chocolate. And possibly my favourite part of this study is the fact that their chocolate of choice was Kinder Maxi Bars. And now, I mean, I love these as kids, but I quite like this tweet that said, how could the reviewers accept that Kinder Maxis are qualified as chocolates? Because let's be honest, they're not really that chocolatey compared to like a bar of dairy milk. But anyway, that's what they decided to, to use. So anyway, the authors took these rats and the first thing they did was devise an experimental design to jet lag these rats and then to either give the rats chocolates when they would usually have breakfast because rats, you know, have breakfast all the time, right? <laughs> or they gave them at the new breakfast time, which is six hours in advance. I am taking this seriously, but I just find it funny. I have an image of rats eating Kinder bars in my head. Anyway, here are some of the results that they got. And what they found was the rats that had chocolate at the new breakfast time saw a faster adjust adjustment to the jet lag. And this was in terms of their general activity and temperature, which are both circadianly regulated. 
So chocolate seemed to have a beneficial impact in terms of acute disruption to the circadian rhythm, but what about shift workers who have a chronic disruption of the circadian rhythm? So in a similar vein to the jet lag tests, the authors devised a strategy to have the rats exposed to shift work and did a similar chocolate test. And interestingly, what they found was that rats that received chocolate for breakfast gained 17% less body weight than the control group and 24% less than the shift worker rats. So this reduces some of the severe consequences that are seen in shift workers, such as metabolic dysfunction and weight gain. But what about the non-working rats and us humans who don't undergo shift work? Well, interestingly, they found that chocolate for dinner in the rats that weren't working had a greater increase in body weight by 16% more than the controls whereas those that had chocolate for breakfast attained a lower body weight. So if I eat chocolate for breakfast, I'm going to lose weight? Well, no, you have to remember that the rats only had five grams, whereas, you know, one of these whole Kinder Maxi bars is 20 grams, which, let's be honest, is nothing in terms of a chocolate treat. And, well, going back to the point, why did they see this um, association between chocolate and the circadian rhythm? Well, the authors reckon it might have something to do with the increased arousal and excitement induced by chocolate arrival, but with the study we have to remember that there are limitations. Firstly, they did this in rats, and as we know, I'm not a mouse or a rat. And then secondly, it's kind of chocolate, really chocolate. And well, anyway, my verdict for this paper is that it's very interesting, but I don't think it's fully convincing yet, at least until we see some human studies. But it does raise the important point that timing is really important in terms of treatments, as I've said before, and it's, well, it's Easter, so it's a chocolate special. So as always, hope you've learned something, and thanks for listening.